a pudding head. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some barware gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. Not a great tracing, but you get the idea. Some wings on here make this base so much wider. These are the products I'm going to test. The Craft House Boston Shaker, the Rectech Cocktail Strainer, the Badass Muddler, the Rabbit Retro Manual Ice Crusher, the ISI Soda Siphon. Craft House Boston Shaker, the Rectech Cocktail Strainer. We have a martini glass, vermouth, vodka, ice and olives. Guess what? It's martini time. We're ready. We've got some vodka, and I'm going to go with the two to one version. Ice, and time to shake it up. If you've never done this, it's very loud. Okay, cup out, strainer in, and let's pour. Shaker's no problem, it's pretty classic, two cups. There's um, not a lot of complaints about that, but this square strainer seemed to want to dribble a little bit to the side. In either case, two olives. Let's see what we have. Oh yeah, that's much better than stirred. I'm gonna try now to compare that to an all-in-one shaker. And what that means is it's got the strainer built in the cap. No need to hold it with two hands. And I gotta tell you, you should wear gloves when doing this. In terms of effectiveness, on a five-point scale, I would give the shaker a five. The strainer, I would give a one, even though it is maybe a nice color. I really don't think it has any advantage over the more traditional round strainer. So now it's time for the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna highlight areas for improvement. No problem there, even though there's a cone shape, I've got those ridges to pull up again, so that helps. Two of those. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Okay, let's go. Now this is really a two-hand operation, but I'm just gonna switch hands to see if I notice any difference. Okay, sounds like it's done. Ooh, man, my cup is a little stuck. And don't switch hands, right. Ooh, my cup doesn't want to release. I probably use both hands to do this. I'm going to try to strain it with my left hand, and this is gonna be a little more clumsy, I think, but I can handle it. If you tilt this a little bit, you notice it's dripping from the side. Now, the problem with that is it may actually drip away from the, off of the glass and onto the table. And you don't wanna lose any vermouth or vodka. So, not as thrilled with the strainer. Okay with the shaker. Whoa! Who designed this? In terms of usability, I am still good with the shaker. It is what it is. Uh, these ridges help. I would give this a five because it's pretty classic design. Usability for the strainer, I would give this a one. So not sure what the thought is behind making this square, but uh, I'm not sure it was a great thought. Always surprises me how it holds the liquid inside when you shake it. You would think it would want to drip. Let's talk about a redesign. For the shaker itself, Again, boy, this is so simplistic and so classic. I don't think I would do too much to this. And, you know, the whole shake action looks like you know what you're doing, whether you do or not. For the strainer, funny little mystery to me as to the purpose of the spring as opposed to something that would seal a little better around here. That being said, I don't think this needs to be square. And, boy, if I start redesigning this, it may go back to just the classic round version of this. I think, uh, I think rounding this so that you don't get drips. If we had a simple round one, boy, I don't love the way this fits onto the shaker. So I think I would take a, a little more aggressive approach in some wings on here that would help center it, probably with a curve so it fits different size shakers. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this shaker a five out of five. I think it works well. I think it's pretty classic. 
In terms of the strainer, I would give this one a one. I think it's a missed opportunity. You definitely want your martini shaken, not stirred, and you can go home tonight and prove that to yourself. The badass muddler. I think Billy Club. Its purpose is to muddle. We're gonna try that out by making a mojito. Hey, I suddenly feel underdressed. Boy, my first thought is this has some weight to it. And be careful not to break the glass. Let's see how that goes. Do three pieces of lime, add some sugar. Whoa, that may be too much, but it's okay. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. Let's add some rum. Whoa, it's gonna be a good mojito. Okay, let's start muddling. I feel a little bit better now that the lime is cushioning the impact of the muddler. With great power comes great responsibility. Okay, I'm splashing a little bit. I may be over muddling this, but I think we're okay. I am going to add some ice. Did I do that backwards? Yeah, I think you want to pour it in and then put the ice on the bottom. Let's try it this way. I'm gonna put some muddled stuff at the bottom. I'm gonna add some ice, some seltzer. Mix it lightly and give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's great. Now that was some excellent muddling I did there. The badass muddler, not the big ass muddler, but the badass muddler did a pretty good job. I thought that was good. It's got two sides to it. And I'm wondering if I really want to get into the corners of the glass, if I should use this flattened side because it's got, you know, almost no radius here, whereas this is going to miss the very corner edges of the glass. But I guess that's up to you and up to the glass. Okay, let's see how the badass muddler compares to a pretty standard wooden muddler. In terms of effectiveness, I would rate it a five because boy, on the downstroke, it really does take care of itself. It's got enough weight to give enough momentum. If I had this around, I would just be a little bit careful about it. Make sure no one makes you angry. Let's try the badass mother again, this time with a slippery left hand. So, oil up. And let's go again. I'm gonna put in a couple of slices of lime. Mint leaves. Bartender, it needs more mint. It's five o'clock somewhere. Badass mother has some texture on it, but I feel a little less stable with it because it is simply a straight cylinder and I do need to put some squeeze power into it to control it. I believe with a slippery and or weaker hand is you would lose the grip a little bit and you'd want to reposition. So that would be an opportunity for some improvement and I don't think it would take much to rectify that. And these are pretty well crushed. It's mojito time. Left-handed or right-handed, they're still pretty well pummeled. On a usability scale, I would give it a four. It's not terrible in either hand, but boy, it's really too bad that they didn't consider slippery hands or weaker hands in using it. I think a little bit of shape in here would have given it some advantage. Let's look at a redesign. Boy, this tracing is gonna be really easy since it's nothing but a cylinder. So let's give it just a little bit of a shape. Doesn't, doesn't need a lot. I'd be like just a little bit to give this thing some curve. And I think we're good to go. It doesn't, I even think I draw it too big. I think it could be extremely subtle. There are other ways to do it, add more texture or put some uh, horizontal stripes into it. But I would think just a really subtle shape change would just uh, orient your hand and, and keep your hand a little more secure. Boy, that's really all I would change on this. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a five, even though I think it has some room for improvement. I think it is a pretty good muddler. Just watch out for your glassware. I would give this badass muddler to anyone I know who is growing mint in their backyard and the mint is out of control. Just muddle your heart out. The Rabbit Retro Manual Ice Crusher. And its purpose is to crush ice. So the way this works is it has some teeth. It's got a bucket to hold the ice. I am going to put in just a couple of pieces of ice here. Let's just see how two chunks of ice are gonna work. And I'm going to start to crush. This is designed to make finer ice in one direction 
and more coarse chunks of ice in the other direction. I feel like I really have to steady it with my other hands. And the reason there is this tapers down to a smaller footprint on the table, so it is more susceptible to tipping. So, boy, not totally in love with it. Ice into the ice crusher. Now this needs to come off and bit of a struggle there. Does not easily want to pop off. And that may be an understatement. Okay, so I gotta give it a pretty good push on a corner to get this to come off. That was, whoa, that was too bad. Also doesn't pour that easily. A little disappointing though, I expected better. Let's see now how the Rabbit Retro Manual Ice Crusher compares to Badass Muddler. Got ice and a towel and ready to start. That was so much more fun. So if you have a badass muddler or a hammer or a big stick, you may want to try that before splurging for the Rabbit Retro Manual Ice Crusher. In terms of effectiveness, I would give it a two and that's being nice to it. And the worst thing you can do with a product is to make it look great and then when someone gets it home to really disappoint them. Time to oil up. And I've got to say right off the bat that the shape is not very conducive. There's a little bit of a lip here, so I can get my finger on it to lift this up. I'm going to put in the ice. Definitely a bit more struggle than, it's, than you would think. I still have a large chunk of ice in here. Let me try it a few more times. That ice cube is dancing around in there laughing at me. Let's try now to open this and you know this shape doesn't allow this to come off at all and boy this part just is no fun. It just wants to slip. So I'm going to try some brute force and let's see if I can get my fingernails. I'm using both hands to open this which seems unnecessary since there's no reason for this to be on here, locked on here so tight, or snapped on so tight. And let's uh, see what we got. Whoa, it certainly doesn't pour out well. It is crushed, but I don't feel like I had control of the size of the chips. In terms of usability, I would give it a one. I had very high hopes that, wow, this is cool. I'm going to have a manual ice crusher and life is going to be beautiful. Boy, that it didn't fulfill on that promise. Let's talk about a redesign. I think there are a lot of things that I would do differently on this. I think one of the things I would do is rethink the base. I would make this base so much wider and more stable and I think it's got some small rubber pads here. That's okay, but I think the rubber pads can be a little more substantial. In doing that, I think it's going to be a lot less likely to wobble. The crank itself, I think I would reshape this and give it a little more of a curve. So this is what we have now. I would give it a little more of a curve in here. Again, that would be a little more stable in the hands as your fingers wrap around it. This top part, boy, it's so difficult to pull it off of the base. So between putting something here that I could pull against, I would do something at least to catch your hand as you're trying to get this top off. It doesn't have to be in this direction. It could be in this direction so it doesn't interfere with the handle, with the crank. Boy, one more thing I think I would do is make this thing pour out more easily. I draw this from a top view. If I do that, there's no reason why this couldn't have a very large and controllable pour spout. As a bite rating, I would give it a one. I don't think anyone's going to be that happy with it. The Banging of the badass muddler was so much more satisfying. It wasn't fighting me. This seems to fight against you. The ISI Soda Siphon. Its purpose in life is to magically convert ordinary water into seltzer. Let's see how it works. First, off with the top. And this gasket and tube comes out. 
and we'll fill it with water. This metal mesh looks pretty classic. Okay, I'm going to reassemble, top back on, screw it tight so the gasket works. I am going to place the cartridge into the cartridge holder. Everyone stand back, goggles on, let's see what happens here. Whoa, and we've been seltzerized. Boy, really funny how the level of water seems to have dropped. At this point, I believe I can remove the cartridge because it's been spent. Cap back on, might as well squeeze some lime in here so I have something to seltzer into. Okay, back. My aim's a little off, but it seems to work. I don't feel like it carbonated the water as much as an ordinary bottle of seltzer. It seems a lot more bubbly than this does. This does have its aesthetic appeal, and it's got the fun aspect. It's got the Mo Larry and Curly vibe to it. I don't know if using two cartridges would make a difference, but I think that would be excessive to expect that. Let's see how that compares to his competition, a bottle of mineral water. In terms of effectiveness, I think I would rate it a two. I would have expected a lot more carbonation. Time to oil up. And I will unscrew that. That's no problem because there's so many things here to push against. And the gasket will simply lift out, so that's not a problem. I am going to pour left-handed. And boy, look how accurate I am. It's okay. Oh, I spilled a little bit. Let's uh, reassemble. So gasket back on, screw the top back on. I'm going to undo this, and this is a little difficult. So I've got a very shiny silver thing, and it means I need to squeeze more to get this off. That could possibly be an opportunity, put some sort of shape or knurling on this so that it would be a little bit easier to open up, see if I can get some friction on here. Okay, that worked. Insert. Okay, that was fun. I can now remove the cartridge. I'm gonna put this back on. It doesn't really need, need to be tight though, so even though I can't tighten it, don't think there's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna put some lime into the pitcher, and with my left hand, give it a shot. Now, look what's happening here. I've gotta use my thumb if I'm gonna shoot this way because this is really a right-handed kind of thing if I'm gonna use my fingers. That being said, I'm gonna try this by squeezing with my thumb. Boy, there's something really satisfying about shooting this seltzer. And let's try that. It's hard to rate this because it's such a classic design. In terms of usability though, I would give it a solid three and a half. It looks like I'm like in a 1930s movie and I feel that way. Okay, let's look at a redesign. Boy, this is such a classic old design. I'd hate to redesign it and ruin that old world appeal. I would possibly put some knurling on this silver cap. And what that means is on this cap, not a great tracing, but you get the idea. I would just add a little bit of shape or knurling or something pretty subtle, just so that when you try to twist it, you get a little purchase on it without squeezing so hard. Very minor detail on this. In terms of a buy rating, I would give it a one. And it's not because it's not usable. It's not about the physical design, but the cartridge did not carbonate the water. I don't think anyone's gonna be that happy with it, especially when a cartridge costs as much or more than a bottle of seltzer. The products that we looked at today, three out of five were pretty disappointing. So, two recommendations, and this is probably a no-brainer, it's just a very simple shaker. And the other one is the Badass Mother, truly badass. We've got winners, we've got losers. Some of these, I think, were created or designed while drinking. Just a little bit left. Whoa, good to go.